you guys on board a nice big ship and talk to you a little bit about the museum and get you guys, at least the younger guys, uh, to be doing something. Yay! <laughs> I know you can't wait to do something. Were you doing stuff in there in the playground? Did you play in the sand? You guys play in the water? Did you do the sand in the water at the same time? No. No, I don't see any mud. You guys gotta get money. <laughs> All right. Well, one thing to know about this area, we could very tell you why this was called Burling Slip. This place used to be underwater a long time ago. The Seaport Museum really tells the story about how this whole place got invented in the first place. And all of this area was all landfill at one point. When the Dutch first came here, it was all underwater. If you're walking, you'd six feet underwater right now if you were here in the 1600s. Slowly over time, they started filling these places in with wharves. And along the edges of those wharves in the middle were big open slips where the boats would come in and all the cargo would get unloaded. This slip was one of those places. They kept the name Burling Slip. You can see how wide it is. You can imagine boats coming in here and on both sides of the wharves, buildings, where they would unload all their stuff. We're going to talk about some of that stuff that these boats used to have because we're walking into one of the biggest boats of its day that used to have a lot of stuff in it. All right? So I want to make sure that the young ones out there are not shy. Are you guys shy? Yeah. You can pretend not to be shy for a while. If you have any questions, don't be shy and ask. Bloggers, you guys I know, you got plenty of questions. Don't be shy. We're going to talk to you a little bit about some of the upcoming programs at the Seaport Museum, things to be doing with families, with uh, adults, and also with the children too. So we'll, we'll get you set on some of all of that. You'll get another handout after the end of this with sort of a listing of our programs you guys can go to town for that, hopefully, and that would be a lot of fun. All right, so we are going to take you across the street to that big ship over there. The most dangerous part about this tour is getting across South Street. After that, it's a piece of cake, all right? So I want you guys to follow me, hold hands, be safe, because we're going to cross a very busy street right now. We are now at Pier 16. As you can tell, that one says Pier 17, so it makes sense. We're at 16, the next big pier. We are next door to Peking. We're going to be getting on board in just a second. The Peking is uh, one of the largest sailing ships ever made. A long time before it's been cleaned up. I mean, we really tell the story of the ups and downs and ups and downs of this neighborhood over the centuries. 1967, this was not a very comfortable place to be. But once this place became a little bit more um, mollified, I guess, in the mid-80s, it became a lot easier to kind of maneuver down here. Our school programs uh, run the gamut from talking about the science of sailing, maritime, um, environmentalism, things such as this. We offer programs. You guys are going to get sort of a whole list of stuff that's going on. Uh, family programs coming up for the fall will include uh, free Friday walking tours, uh, experiential learning that's going on here on board the King. We have a new exhibit opening up in September for photographer Alfred Stieglitz, um, very famous turn of the century photographer. Do you know when this was built in 1911? Do you know if they had like other kinds of ships in 1911? Anybody know about a big ship named the Titanic? Yeah, I knew. <laughs> you know it. The Titanic was a big ship built almost at the same time as the Peking. But the Titanic didn't have these big, giant masts. This was a large sailboat built in 1911, really at the very end of when sailboats were kind of popular and necessary. This ship has masts. If you look all the way up to the top, which is really hard to do without getting dizzy, those masts are almost 200 feet tall like 180 feet tall, as high as like a 17-story building. This was one of the largest sailing boats that was ever made. 377 feet from end to end, about 40 to 45 feet wide, and it weighed about 8,000 tons. That's a lot of tons. Now, with a boat like this weighing 8,000 tons, you gotta wonder, how do you make a boat that weighs 8,000 tons stop? It's one thing to get it going, it's another thing to get it to stop. A boat like this would go because you would have sails that would be unfurled here, and the wind would blow on those sails and it would push the boat forward. If you guys have ever been on a sailboat, you've seen all that happen, you've seen sailboats. But to make a boat stop, what would you use to make a boat this big stop? Does it have brakes? No. What would it have? You've got to put the sails down and then the wind won't blow it away. That is a good idea. 
You put the sails down, the wind sort of doesn't have anything to blow on, right? That's one way. Now, if it's really windy out, it would even blow the boat around even without the sails. How else could you make it stop? What do you got? Put down the anchor. Put down the anchor! The anchor on this boat weighs about two and a half tons. It probably weighs more than your car. And there were two of those anchors, just in case it was like that bad of the weather. Yes? Um, even, even when you put up the anchor. When you put up the anchor, this boat could go anywhere it wanted to go. We have it tied to the dock. We have it anchored to the ground. It's not going anywhere, trust me. We've had a lot of wind out here. But this is a cool boat to talk about, sort of how big it is and why it's so big to walk down. Yeah.